Stubblefield's in studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. I've got a military person coming up for you in I'm, honor of Veterans Day later on this morning. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. In studio with us right now, Mark Carroll. He is the CEO and President of CMB Bank. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome back. Great to be back. I'm glad your chair hasn't sunk yet. <laughs> uh, Rob, before we start uh, asking uh, Mark the questions that he's uh, he was asked to address today, I'd like to point out a couple of things with CNB that Mark would not mention himself, but I think they should be mentioned. Uh, one, uh, CNB is a Corporate Philanthropist of the Year Award, which is a big, big thing. Their their contribution to the community uh, on a host of areas is is well recognized. So congratulations. Uh, Mark to you and your people also you and your folks are doing are engaged in something called act of kindness and uh, uh, last week you did over 600 acts of kindness uh, would you speak to that please oh sure be happy to uh, always lead with local matters right mm -hmm. and uh, as a community bank we just care so deeply for this community and uh, you know we we kind of were talking about this with a with a group of our of our associates and we kicked the idea around that there was a national effort with uh, with local community banks throughout the country of of this day of uh, you know the best day ever and we thought yeah, our team just embraced this they were super excited about it and uh, they did it all on their own uh, and and so i'm so excited about our team and uh, and how much they care so deeply for this community can you give an example, one or two examples of what would be considered an act of kindness? Oh, sure. There's uh, there are several examples, but uh, at, at one point we were in downtown Martinsburg feeding meters so that folks, uh, you know, could shop <laughs> a little bit lo longer at the local stores. Uh, we were uh, we had examples where we had folks at Hunter's Hardware up in Berkeley Springs giving some uh, ten dollar uh, coupons for uh, for their purchases up there. And then we were literally giving cash out on street to folks, uh, handing out uh, shoes and socks and others, and and participating and partnering with some of the local churches and other uh, nonprofits to help with their efforts as well. So well, really exciting day for, for us. When you hand out cash again, would you let us know? Would you get? <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, be first in line. I'm not, I, you know, so Bill, it's funny you say that because I didn't see the the, the uh, entirety of the agenda. So for some reason, they didn't share with me where they're <laughs> handing out the cash. You know, it only makes sense. Like if you're a baker and you make cookies, sometimes yeah. you give out cookies. Yeah. If you're a banker, what do you have to give out? Cash. 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 Yeah. Bring, give out some of that old money that gets turned over for the newer money, <laughs> right? Just instead of burning that stuff, just give it out. And I assume this is something the board of directors uh, or the shareholders do not uh, address before you did it. <laughs> well, uh, I know uh, uh, Rob and uh, Bill, you both of you know some of our some of our directors, yeah. and Good they were people. excited yeah. for it. They're yeah. very uh, they're very caring folks, and they're all local, right? Yeah. And so they understand the impact. That's one of the beautiful things about your bank. You are, you are local. Another way banks give out cash is by paying interest on the money that you keep in it, right? So you're at interest, and those uh, interest payments have gotten to be a lot uh, better looking over the last uh, year or so because of uh, higher interest rates, Mark. Indeed it has. It was a nice segue. This is what I do for a living. Don't, <laughs> don't try this at home because it's dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it, let's talk about interest rates right now, because this morning I read a thing that came across the CNBC.com website, financial website, which talked about the fact that mortgage rates, they used the word plunge. I uh, looked at the rest of the story. It said they went from 7.86% to 7.61%. I wouldn't call that a plunge, but a quarter percent dip over uh, a course of a $500,000 mortgage can be pretty, pretty uh, uh, impressive. Uh, that's certainly significant. I, I agree with you. I wouldn't consider it a plunge, but certainly the mortgage rates uh, have been volatile this in the last eighteen months, for sure. Oh yeah, and with the with the Fed uh, in a holding pattern right now, what word are you getting? Any inside information as to whether they're going to bump again and then again and then stop, or are they now done? Sure, uh, really fair question, and it's on the mind of of a lot of folks, small businesses. Uh, individuals who are looking to buy a car, individuals who are considering buying a home, it's on their mind is uh, w when is a good time. And uh, we'll speak to that a little bit. Uh, but here's what I can say, Rob, with absolute certainty, this is what you pay me to do today, is that rates will either remain the same or they'll change. 
<laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, I could have said in that agree. seat, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm 100% no, in agreement no, with uh, it, it is tricky. So you had mentioned the Fed and what the Fed has done. Uh, so the Fed, the Federal uh, Reserve, they have what's often referred to as a dual mandate, right? And so um, they're trying to maintain a reasonable inflation level, which has been significant over these last 18 months, um, and also keep uh, keep maximum employment. And sometimes those dual mandates don't always align, mm-hmm. right? And then there's a third component not often talked about, but through those through that dual uh, mandate. They try to uh, affect positive results on moderate long-term rates. So what they're doing doesn't have a direct impact on long-term rates, hence the 30-year mortgage that you reference. That's really what's called the street, right? That's that's the street that's driving that. And so the Fed's actions really had nothing to do with what you just referenced in the last 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that numerous times. Uh, the first time I heard it was when I went to buy my first house in 1988. Uh, and yet, it seems whenever the Fed raises interest rates, mortgage rates do go up. Uh, they generally do. Yeah. That that is correct. Uh, and, and so, what we've had today is is interesting. Over these last eighteen months, when the when the Federal Reserve start moving, and that's let's just reference that. I think it's an important point to reference. They have moved rates uh, about five five hundred twenty five basis points. That translates to five and a quarter percent. So we've gone from a quarter of a percent to five and a half percent in 18 months. That created what's called an inverted yield curve. And we, we can do that in another segment to get into the details of that. Um, but what happened is the short-term rates are higher than the long-term rates. And that's pretty unusual, right? That's called an inversion in the yield curve. Even today, as we sit today, 18 months later, prime rate is eight and a half. So that's the, that's the benchmark for overnight borrowing. But yet a 30-year mortgage, as you just referenced, is 7.6. So the 30-year mortgage rates are still below what overnight rates are. So we still have an inversion in the in the in the rate curve. And and this uh, is, is fascinating. If you've searched online for CD rates, traditionally it's always been the longer your CD rate, the better the interest rate that gets paid. It's exactly opposite now. The longer the rate for the CD, the less it is over shorter terms 18 months 24 months you can actually get a better rate that's not usual that is uh and that's a direct reflection of the inversion that we have in the yield curve uh you mentioned short-term borrowing or short-term rates and long-term rates explain the difference yep and so uh typically um when you when you're thinking about prime rate there, there are two primary segments you might want to think about small businesses their funding equipment etc a lot of those are going to be Pinged off of the federal, the I'm sorry, the uh, prime rate, which is currently eight and a half percent. A lot of car car rates, car loans will ping more closely aligned with the prime rate, right? Long term rates are generally reserved for mortgages, uh, so could be commercial real estate, could be residential real estate, and generally written at thirty year terms, but many are written at fifteen and twenty as well. So you mentioned uh, auto loans mm-hmm. and. Um, auto loans have certainly changed over the last couple of years as car prices have changed. The average new car price now, depending on what survey you read, is anywhere from 40-something thousand to the mid-50s, which you're starting to get into the mortgage rates. I mean, I think my first house was $102,000 in 1988. It's pretty easy to buy a $100,000 car now, and it's not a Lamborghini or a top-notch Ferrari or a Mercedes. You, you can get into a pickup truck for $100,000 now. And it, it's not unusual, or at least close to it anyway, which means that the traditional 36-month loan, when you're trying to buy an auto, or 48 or 60, even if you were stretching it too far, uh, doesn't really apply anymore. You have to go longer term now on an auto loan. And in, in some cases, the payments are the equal to what a mortgage payment used to be. Indeed it is, and you're exactly right. When I first uh, started in the business in banking in 1988, uh, it, it, you know, a typical car loan, as you said, was three years. And then as they pushed it up to four years, for us bankers, that was a big, that was a big step. And then five year became pretty common. We're seeing seven and eight year is not an uncommon term for a car loan. Is that, the market adapts to what it needs to adapt to Indeed. in the private sector, and it's going to have to adapt even further for auto loans because the prices won't come down, especially as more technology is required in these vehicles, they'll only go up. So how do you see 
auto loans in, in five or 10 years in this business looking? Wow, uh, they're either going to stay the same or they're going to change. change. <laughs> well, we have like a, the, will there be like the arm auto loan like there is for a house yeah, when interest rates are high? You know, it's yeah. fascinating that you, you asked that. I, I too, like you, I, my, uh, my wife and I purchased our first home in 1991. And, and I believe it was 98,000. I don't hold me to that. But I do remember specifically my interest rate was 9%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mine so, was 10 and a half. Yeah, so, uh, so 9%. And two years later, uh, I was in the business, so I remember this. The rates had dropped to seven and a quarter. So I was thrilled, right? Um, so and had an opportunity to refinance. And so, um, so certainly when you look at uh, you know car loans thirty years later, potentially being how much my house was thirty years ago, I think you're right. I think uh, the um, the manufacturers and lenders are going to have to continue to be creative t- in order to put buyers in the vehicles bill yeah uh for someone that uh, has a high mortgage they will tend to refinance in time how difficult is that to refinance yeah really a really good question the process to refinance uh, in some respects is very similar to a purchase but also it's different Um, so typically what what it's called is a a a rate term uh, refinance so you're not getting any additional money Typically, it's uh, typically it's because you want to have a, a better rate, and sometimes folks will even try to shorten up the term, you know. Because as I mentioned earlier, in a typical rate environment, a 15-year mortgage may be uh, maybe a better rate than a than a 30. So depending on where you in the term, the process is you would you would still apply. There are some closing costs. Uh, the typical, and I'll use an average of $300,000 mortgage in Berkeley County. You can anticipate. Uh, closing costs to be around four thousand dollars so it's really important to sit down with a a mortgage professional and walk through that and make sure that your time horizon aligns with what that investment's going to be so you can get that payback i can see the advantage the obvious advantage to the homeowner from the bank's perspective i see it more it's more difficult to see the advantage uh, it, well, certainly is, but but what we want to try to do is take good care of our clients, right? And so, as we're continuously ma- ma- managing our balance sheet, um, and and that's not always uh, linear, right? And so there's there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of dynamics that go into play with that. But we certainly want to be in a position to help our clients. Uh, so when they come back to refinance, uh, as a community bank, uh, we're, we're we're we kind of have a mix, Bill. We, uh, some of our loans we keep within our portfolio on our balance sheet. Some of our loans we sell to what's called the secondary market. And that's really a function of what's in the best interest of the client. That's what leads it um, and uh, what, what their situation is. The, the secondary market uh, uh, has been subject to s- some confusion over the years. It's also been uh, subject to uh, uh, some some complaints from the homeowners feeling that they had uh, worked a deal with their local banker then the next thing they know someone across the country has their uh, uh, has their mortgage and that person across country is not quite as sympathetic with the homeowners what the local banker was uh, I assume you you address this all the time what is your, how do you talk to the homeowner when you in the yeah. process of selling your mortgage? Bill, that's a really, really good point and an important one. And we, we do our best to convey that to the to the client. Um, we don't have uh, the ability or very limited ability to place a long term, say a thirty year fixed rate in our in our portfolio. Uh, we don't have the capacity to offset that interest rate risk. So when we convey that to the client, we, we do our best and we're transparent as to how that loan is going to be handled, the servicing is going to be sold, and we explain that. But you're exactly right. They're not as sympathetic as a, as a community bank would be. Some clients have become accustomed to that and that's satisfactory to them. Uh, but we have any number of clients that say, I, 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 I don't care, I want only to pay you. And, and I'm willing to do that on, a, on an arm, an adjustable rate mortgage. The adjustable rate mortgage is great until it's time to, uh, uh, when the interest rates goes down and you have this fairly high, expensive. It's uh, great on the way down, Bill. On the way down, yeah. But then this comes back to the refinancing question we talked about earlier. So, Right. And, and you're exactly right. So if, you're, if, you, uh, if you received a, a, an arm, an adjustable rate mortgage, seven years ago and you're adjusting today, 
uh, that kind of stings a little bit, yes, right? Yes, it does, yeah. And, and then on the other side of that, if you're, if you're receiving an arm today and you anticipate rates are going to drop uh, over the next five, seven years, then you can be the beneficiary of that without the cost of refinancing. So you said they can be great, but they can also be greater, right? Because you're going you're gonna to be uh, adjusting along with the market. Yeah, for, again, us on the outside looking in, it seems like a mystery of what dictates the rates. You alluded to it a while ago with the, the Fed having some input, and there's, uh, uh, there's other factors as well. Uh, where do you, as a bank, get your guidance? Yeah, it's a really fair question. So we certainly have an internal team uh, that works uh, closely together, and then we have outside vendors that we work with and we seek guidance. And then there's a brethren of bankers, and so we follow the national trends, we follow the local trends, uh, we follow a couple of economists, and then, and again, we have a couple of vendors who help us along the way as well. Mark, I want to ask you about the 10-year Treasury bond. It's at 4.573%. This has uh, been up around 5% uh, not too long ago. It's uh, dipped back down. Today, it's up slightly. What is the impact of the 10-year Treasury on banking rates? That's a, uh, re another really good question. Um, typically, what you will see, if you want to follow mortgage rates, in particular, the 30-year mortgage, the 10-year Treasury is the primary. That That's kind of the gold standard, if you will. Um, and, and again, maybe for another segment, Rob, but uh, you, you know, it, it, for an investor to purchase up, what happens with these 30-year mortgages is they get packaged up and sold to the investment community. And so an investor is going to look at a risk-free 10-year treasury compared to a mortgage-backed security, um, and they're going to make their determination what they're willing to uh, demand in terms of a return. Mm -hmm. And so that's why oftentimes, uh, in order to follow the 30-year mortgage, just follow the 10-year treasury, and you can anticipate what's going to happen. And that's ultimately why the markets fall when interest rates are higher, because if you can get a 10-year treasury at 4.5%, 5%, is it worth the risk of trying to get back 8 or 9% of the market before taxes? Exactly. All right, that's exactly. kind of how it boils down. It's, pretty, it's, it's simple math. All right, that's credit card rates, because those are outrageous right now. Some credit card uh, rates are over 30%. I think usury used to be the term for those kind of rates on the street, Bill, when you were a younger guy. When I was a younger guy. As a guy. Navy man on leave, <laughs> looking for some, some money to splurge at the bars. We, we did not get past that first block <laughs> when we left the ship. <laughs> but uh, that's the, uh, the going uh, credit card rate now is in the, uh, the high 20s to 30s now, which is... Uh, some people would regard it, including myself, as obscene. It, it, well, it certainly is, and you know, to 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 any financial advisor, you know, the the value of a credit card is just that transaction, right? Um, and and, and you know, we should all be responsible when we're handling our credit cards. And so, you know, we we're always encouraging folks use the credit card. The plastic is a nice, convenient tool for purchases, um, but you know, be frugal and and be committed to your budget. And pay it off. And, and pay, pay it off. It off. Yeah. And pay it off. And yeah. pay it off. Um, hey, uh, before we run out of time, Mark, a final thought from you. Anything else you want to make sure you got out there today? Uh, no. You know, I, I think if, if you allow me just to talk for half a minute about the, the history of, of interest rates, and oftentimes folks say, well, you know, interest rates are high. Should I be buying a house today? And, and I, the short answer, it's really dependent on the individual, right? Um, if you go back 50 years, we were talking about 30 years ago, but 50 years ago in that's when Freddie Mac started tracking the rates. The rate was seven, uh, seven point seven four. Today they're around seven and a half, um, and so we had that big acceleration in rates in the '80s, and we had that unusually low time in the early 2000s. So today's rate kind of feels normal, um, and so it's a component of a decision. But what, one of the things we often uh, recommend to folks is it's a component of a decision. But sit down, make sure you're financially prepared to make this kind of a decision. Talk with a local expert, talk, talk with your local advisor, work through all that, and what's your alternative and what's your timeline. Very good. Any final questions for Mark? No, good information as always, Mark. Thanks for coming in. Always appreciate it, thank you. How do people get in touch with you, Mark, for more information? Yep, you can reach out to, uh, to us at, at CMB, CMB Bank. Uh, you can use cmb.bank, or you can call our, our toll-free number and, or visit any one of our offices. And also, Mark, congratulations to you and your bank for being recognized in the community for the community service you're providing. I yeah. truly appreciate it, and we hope we can continue yeah. to do those uh, fine, fine deeds. Mark, have a great day. Thank you. Mark Carroll, President and CEO of CMB Bank at uh, 928.